Hey, everyone, and welcome back in the entrance of the round of eight. Two rounds of elimination have already gone through here, so we're going to hop on this and see how it works out. A lot of teams have made it here. The round of eight is looking very, very promising, but we're going to be watching TSM Team Solo Mid up against SK Gaming coming up next. We're hopping in the picking stage very shortly. This is an exciting match to watch. This, this one's going to be big, Dry Bear. Like The reason it's going to be so big as well, when you think about it, is that at the launch tournament, TSM won. And SK Gaming finished third overall. Right. So those two teams overall, like they are top of the Smite tier list in terms of experience and exposure and the way they played showed so much. So these two facing off in the quarterfinals, this is going to be important. Yeah, when we're hopping in the pick and stage here, you got to be careful about, you know, what ends up being picked, what ends up being banned. you got to think that after the MVP highlights and, you know, the EU highlights from last week, that you'd want to see, uh, you know, Agni being banned away from Lobster. He just plays it so oh, yeah. very well here. Uh, looks like the first band coming out here, TSM, on the left side of your screen, waiting to see what they want to go with. Now, keep in mind, Smek is now on that roster. Played very well last week, but not as much as, as well as you thought. Ross going to be the first band here. Yeah, Rob and away, they, they're clearly scared of the sustain. Obviously, we do know overall that um, Game Hunter likes to play the mana as well. And, and um, if he does choose to do that, Ra is very, very good in that matchup. And then we see Bastet being banned away from SK Gaming. Are you shocked? No, I'm never shocked. Shock, never shocked. Sorry. That's, that's Ur, Ur is going to be banned out Ur, here. Ur. <laughs> and Odin gets banned out as well. So SK Gaming uh, is kind of like getting the, the, the typical bans here. Was TSM went up in lower bands. Now, the fact that Odin was banned out on the opposite side is going to allow them oh, to grab up Sundu Kong very quickly. And, you know, those are the two that you want to get, right? You want either Odin or you want yeah. Sundu Kong in the support role because they're so aggressive and, and very high control. And so Sundu Kong is going to go the way of TSM and Odin's gone away. But the question is, what's going to happen here? We know Captain Twig likes Poseidon. We know Captain Twig likes Chalk. Who will we go with in the mid lane here? It looks like Poseidon's going to be hovered on here. Not that surprising, considering how well Sayo did last week with Poseidon. Yeah, I mean, Sayo did a great job last week with Poseidon, as well as the fact that we do... I think the other thing is, as well, we know Sayo is really good on Isis as well, but that's another story anyway. But Poseidon's going to be locked in, and Aphrodite, I believe, is being hovered over right now. I'm not sure if they're going to lock it in. Poseidon. They have the done. Lock. That's right. Aphrodite and Poseidon put together here. Now, Aphrodite is becoming more and more valued. She's just so powerful in so many ways. But the thing about her is she's so simple. So she's very simplistic. So people don't really kind of put her up on that echelon that she should be on right now. Looks like you can hop over to TSM, left side of your screen, to see what they want to go with here. Now, they might be going for a hunter pick right off tier. the bat. Let's then go for tier and lock it in immediately. Most likely be going in the jungle this time. Apollo. Next one's going to be Apollo locked in right away. Smack kind of moving over to that Apollo. Apollo is just so powerful right now. Yeah, he is. And one thing we'll probably see as well is that if we don't see SK, SK Gaming really need to pick up a Hunter here, because if they don't, it gives TSM the opportunity to use their last ban to ban away one of the Hunters as well, which forces um, TSM right. into a... Sorry, for, makes TSM in a better position in terms of who Apollo gets to fight in that lane. Now we're seeing who's going to be banned next. Now with the Hunter picked on the left side for TSM, they have one more pick just like for SK Gaming. Honestly, it might be a Hunter, uh, given the fact that they might be banning something out. No, it looks like they're going to be hovering on something here. What will it be? Uh, looking for maybe a support <laughs> since... Uh, there, there it is. Geb locked yep. in. So that's the third. That's the third wheel, the third option, right? Odin and Sinukong gone. Geb is always a great option. Those are the top three picked supports as it stands right now. And so he's going to be locked in for him. Now as the bans, you're most likely expecting TSM to ban out a Hunter here, maybe? Maybe kind of limit the choices for SK across the yeah. way. There's Ogni, so that's for Lobster. Yeah, that's definitely for Lobster. What a, what a shock to see that. I'm surprised we didn't see TSM pick that one up earlier if they were going to really pick it. So they didn't think that was going to be such an issue. So we'll see how that one plays out. Is it going to be a Hunter? No, it's going to be Hun Bats being banned away because they've not picked up a jungle yet. So taking away the fact that they've not picked a jungle yet, they're like, okay, well, we definitely don't want to deal with Hun Bats in this situation. Let's that's take right. it out. Be careful here too, because SK has a really strong team fight as it stands right now. Gab, Aphrodite, Poseidon, Poseidon and Gab together is such a strong combination. But you know they do have the mobility on the left side, as you can see on the graphs down below. High amounts of mobility from Sunu Kong, Apollo, uh, both very mobile characters. Waiting to see what the next picks will be. It's going to be over to SK. Real Z going to be selecting for his team. They need a hunter. There's only a few to choose from now. Uh, what will they go with? Artemis is pretty popular right now. Neath very popular. Uh, you know that looks like Artemis is going to be selected and locked Artemis. in for Reels. Reels generally likes his on her, but he's not going to go for it this time around. Across the left side of the screen, you're going to see what is uh, your Low Lobster's secondary choice. It's going to be Isis locked in Isis, and Kronos yeah. hovered on. Uh, I don't know. Is Kronos, is Kronos real? <gasps> real? Oh my goodness, Kronos! Wait. Hype! Could this be? Oh my god. This could be it. 
Please, TSM, don't let me down. This could be a Game Hunter Apollo solo and a Smek Kronos ADC Hunter roll. They've done this before. We know Game Hunter likes wow. his Apollo solo. We know Smek likes Kronos as a hunter against certain matchups. Mm. He said, I talked to him specifically at the launch event, he likes Kronos against On Her and Artemis because he can outrange both of them and harass them down before they can touch Kronos because of the increased range on stop time. I hope this is what they're doing here. I would be excited if it was. I mean, if it is, then this this is one of the picks that taken into account when they pick Kronos here, if they do do that, because of Artemis, you know? Artemis is starting to see more play again. Oh. She's starting to come a bit far back into the rotation. We saw it in the North American scene, and Chuck is the final lock-in from SK Gaming there. So it looks like he's going to be a Chuck jungle in this situation. Or is it Poseidon jungle? Ooh, I, I can dream, right? Uh, you can dream, but it's not going to be that. I believe it's going to be a Chalk Jungle here. Uh, solo Aphrodite, and then it's going to be Geb and Artemis together with Poseidon in the mid lane. We know Captain Twig's such a strong mid laner. It's not going to be the case, ladies and gentlemen. Smack's taking Apollo and Game Hunter's taking Kronos. I got my hopes up. It's something they've done before, and they've done it many times. They've done it successfully, but they're going to go with the easy route. They're going to go with the safe route. They're going to put Smack on that Apollo, such a strong hunter, uh, putting uh, Kronos in the solo lane. Kronos is best fit in the solo lane as it stands right now. Uh, probably his only role that is just kind of reliable and, and very uh, you know predictable in the way that it performs and how you're going to be able to control it as you go from uh, landing phase into the mid game. So the final lap here is going to be Kronos played by Game Hunter in the solo lane for TSM. Tier going in the jungle. Apollo and Sinu Kong lining up together with Isis played by Lobster in the mid lane. Across the way, SK Gaming, they're going to have Poseidon in the mid lane up against Isis, which is actually a pretty decent matchup for both of those. Maniac taking Aphrodite in the solo lane to face off against uh, Kronos, actually. An interesting matchup we don't see too much. Geb and Artemis lining up together against Apollo and Sinu Kong, and then Chalk in the jungle against Tier. So very durable junglers this time around. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be interesting to see how those junglers perform because we know Tear in the early game definitely needs to get ahead. If he can get ahead, he's really going to snowball. So keep it, Fred. Go and look for some early pressure ganks. And I think in the solo lane, like Chrono should be pretty safe against Naphrodite because he does use a lot of ranged attacks. So as long as he keeps himself back and obviously uses his mobility to an advantage, he should have a pretty safe lane to farm. So expect to see Chuck rotating over there more often than not. Right now, we're going to see TSM up against SK. You're in the middle of the round of eight. We're moving on to this round here to see who is going to move forward. TSM is probably the fan favorite, but throw, go ahead and throw up in chat who you're voting for this time around. And if you have something that you want to see on screen, tweet out hashtag SWC to see your tweet on screen, a possibility there. And also let us know who you're rooting for here today. And TSM versus SK Gaming is going to be a very big match for them. Will TSM be knocked out now and not even have their chance to get a rematch against C9? Or will SK Gaming fall? Find out in just a few moments. Hey everyone and welcome to the round of 8 matchup TSM vs SK Gaming is taking place right here, right now on Smite Game Live. Let's cover our teams and who's playing what. The bottom side of the map, the blue team, the green grass defenders of order and all that is good in the world. TSM, smack on Apollo, Cubo Fred in the jungle with Tear, Lobster playing, Isis in the mid lane, Trix Tank on support with Sun Ukong, and Game Hunter on Kronos. And on the other side of the map, we're going to see SK Gaming fighting, I guess, for everything evil and bad in the world ever to exist. We're going to see Bagda, Badga, sorry, playing... Badger. Um, oh, Badger. Badger? Badger? I'm Badger. learning the name still, and that's terrible because oh. he's getting caught out of position now. Spirit Ball lands a lot of damage on him. He's going to have to sacrifice himself here. He does land a nice one just to slow it down a little bit, but no one's going to be able to rotate and pick, pick him up there. So Smek going to get first blood there. And the rest of the team, Real X, is going to be playing Artemis. Angie, Angie is going to be playing... Solo, Chuck, Captain Wig in the mid lane on Poseidon, and, um, sorry, Ma Maniac. Maniac is playing Afro. Why can I not get names right today? There are some names, you just I look suck. at them and you just say, nope, nope, not going to happen. Uh, but it seems like today is the day of first blood, because it's exactly what we're seeing to this game and last game. A great start. I mean, last game, Emelito first blooded at his, uh, his enemy blue buff trying to ward. And it seems to be the case where teams are realizing that there's always a support who just runs into the, the willy-nilly and tries to ward out of position. And you can catch them more often than not. And that's what they're seeing right now. This time around, Geb will be taken out. So first blood going to TSM right off the bat. Right mid-camp goes to TSM. Left mid-camp goes to TSM. Not only that, but they use the hog to clear out the mid-camp from Trixank. And they're going to get their blue buff anyway. So TSM is winning on literally every single possible platform in the start of this game. And they're happy about it. Yeah, exactly. And the one thing to note as well, TSM's duo lane are going to be ahead in experience because Poseidon rotated over to actually help out with that blue buff at the start to absorb some XP for that mid lane. So Trix Tank and Smek definitely going to have an early lead in that lane. 
Now following up here, mid lane, Ice is pushing up against Poseidon. Poseidon has a very strong clear, but of course, he was part of the early farm, making sure they don't lose out too much. Looking at the gold graphs right now, it's 700 gold in favor of TSM at literally before the minute mark. That is a big, big lead for them. But it's not something that they can't recover from. It's really careful about how they control the laning phase. Left side, they should come out of Trick Stink, forcing him out. We're going to see some and harassment on both sides here. Is left lane and right lane are both going head to head. We're going to see initiation coming out on Sunokong Kong yet again. Smack dropping very low here. Realty with the harassment, dropping it down to about 200 HP, forcing the pot coming out there. Smack uses only pot to try and heal back up. Will it be enough? Yeah, he should be okay for the time. He's just got to be play carefully in that lane. And the biggest thing about that is the first hunter to use that HP potion is definitely the one at a disadvantage. Over in the duo lane, we do see the once again the push coming out from Maniac and Angie during the early game, which is not to be surprised at the moment. Obviously, Tear finally hitting level three now four, so he will be able to help clear the. Yeah, of course, it's the hardest part about Kronos is early game. Kind of the new WAS syndrome, right? Where you just start off very, very weak, and as the game progresses, you become stronger and stronger and stronger. That's exactly what oh. you're seeing here from Kronos. Uh, Chalk on the mid lane, looking for it, not going to find it. Of course, Chalk is not really the greatest ganker in, in the world, especially if he has his ultimate. But if he doesn't have his ultimate, he doesn't really have anything to offer. Of course, a little bit of damage to follow up. Uh, other than that, you know, Poseidon would need his Whirlpool, which he used to clear. So a Lobster is fine for the time being. Looks like they go for the damage, but the Trix Tank wants part of it. This is Trix Tank's signature. He likes to evade jungle timers. Will able to you get this it. one away. Jingle bang. Nope. Doesn't have the distance. I uh, didn't have the clear either, but of course showing presence is always a good thing. Yeah, I mean, he showed the presence on the map showing that he's like, hey, I know when your buff's coming up. I'm going to keep an eye on it. I expected you to be there. Meanwhile, we see Isis pushing in mid. Lobster doing a good job of keeping Poseidon pushed to tower, so when he rotates away, he's going to get back very, very quickly. But that means that they're going to be able to recall quickly. Lobster, he's going to be the first to back in that mid lane and have the extra items. You know, one thing that's very strange about this, and a little bit unfortunate about the start of this game, is Gib ended up going for oh, a mid rotation Shroud. Duo. That's right, it's coming through here. The slow on smack gets away. No ultimate to disengage here. He does have the ultimate to silence. Whirlpool is available. Battles are just going to come out here, forcing him forward, possibly. Looking for the damage they need. Smack is going to go right into the go center of damage. There goes the ball. They're taking him out here. Now looking for the ball up on Trick Tank. Trick Tank does have his animals available if he wants to use that. Does not need to use it, though. A big rotation that wasn't capitalized here. Didn't steal a jungle buff. Uh, Isis did not push the mid lane, so a bit of a response here on that side. Lawbringer jump again. Knock up. This is a guaranteed kill. Good shield by Geb, but it's not going to save it. There goes the knock. Looking for Trick Tank here. Force uses ultimate. There goes the chalk hit. Now looking for tier. Can they follow up on this one? Oh, up in the air is going to be Trick Tank. Where is he going to go with this one? He's going to land in place and actually activate in time. Now the follow up come up here. Do they have the knock away? Does he have the animals? He does have enough mana to use that. And now they're going to back off entirely. So it's a two for one lead for TSM. Yeah, big shout out to SK Gaming's communication there. They realized that um, Smek wasn't level 5 yet, so he didn't have his ultimate available to escape that situation. So great rotation over from Poseidon as well, as well as Chuck to come over there and do that. Nice spirit ball landing in mid lane, though, just to deny for a second or two. But yeah, I mean, it was really important for him to rotate over when they did to put the pressure on Smek early after that small lead he started with. Kronos heading back over to his lane, trying to get as much out of this as he can, considering the fact that everyone is just completely rotating on the left lane. He's got the mid camps cleared out. That's a big, big benefit for him. Look at the gold difference between the two of them. 2,900 for a game hunter across the way. You're going to see Maniac sitting at a 2,900 himself, so they're all both tied up. Upon the left side, we'll see, look at Paul's goal. He's going to be at 30... 40 himself, but just over uh, the 3,000 gold mark, and Ar Artemis is actually being at 2870, so a really big lead for Smek early on, even though he did end up dying, Artemis did as well, and the gold is in favor of Apollo here. Yeah, I mean, he's been in favor of him since the start of the game, although we did see Reels actually manage to pick up that kill onto Smek. His team kind of left it to make sense, so the Reign of Arrows actually did secure that kill for him, which was nice during these early stages, and I'm, I'm interested to see how this one continues to play out, because at the moment TSM do have a small advantage in this game, but the rotation's coming out already early from SK Gaming are showing that they're, they're up for this game. Now, the biggest thing about this is we're going to see some weird starts here. Both Hunters are going Transcendent, so we're not going to see Heart Seekers this time around. Uh, a little bit surprising, actually, that we're not going to see Heart Seekers. Now, Apollo does do well with it. Artemis does well with it as well. But, you know, the, the, the thing that, uh, of this is the fact that both of them are going Transcendent is that neither of them are going to have a boxing advantage from items. They both have the same itemization here. They're both going for the mid game uh, come out with that transcendence and so you're not going to have someone who has Heartseeker Aussie or Heartseeker Draining Blade or Heartseeker Boots with Penetration. They're going to be able to trade better than the other hunter in that early landing phase opportunity which is really the only downside of transcendence minus the price of course. And also again I want to reiterate that Geb did end up going for Vampiric Shroud which he's not going to be able to benefit from a lot. He's just a little bit damage out on the top end and really that's the only reason he's buying it is just for the damage. Yeah, exactly. as long as he can, if he doesn't keep the pressure up, then obviously as time goes on, Trick Tank's going to get a gold lead over the other support of Badger because that gold generation item of Watcher's Gift 
will continue to tick and tick and tick away and just allow him to sustain more gold, allowing him to buy the wards a lot easier. Now one thing that we have to note as well, the mana consumption by Artemis is a little bit higher than Apollo, uh, but the damage is what they're looking for with that pickup, there's a lot of people talking about that. Boots almost done here for Poseidon to pick up that penetration, looks like Artemis is going to finish out the transcendence, and so is Apollo. They're oh, very blink. blink in the mid lane, looking for Cap Twig, the purification piece gets popped immediately, and he'll be A-OK, -okay. Chalk coming in here looking for the silence, not going to go for it actually. Left side, it's a slap by of supports, Gab's going to make his way around, back up to his side of the map, but a lot of failed gank attempts so far by both teams. It is. I mean, I'm quick look over the, the solo lane for the time being as well. While there's no, actually, I was going to say there's no action, but at the moment we can see Chart being rotated on again from TSM. Trick Sank coming from behind, just running away. The mid harpies are spawning, and TSM doing a good job of trying to get overall starting position on this spirit ball. Lands onto Badger. He's in a lot of trouble. The Silas is going to stop him rolling. He does have to use the Cataclysm and then roll away, but the damage from the Jingo Band and he does get secured by Lobster there. So nice play from TSM, and that's going to mean the mid left harpies are definitely going to go to them. Can they rotate onto mid lane now? Trix Tank and Lobster looking for the Spirit Ball lands onto uh, Captain Twig. He's going to have to juke away for the best part. Jingle Band lands again. So we can't go into the sky. Follow. And then comes Smek. Smek picking that one up. And that in trouble as well. Chuck using the ultimate to try Spirit and... Ball. The Spirit Ball lands as well. He goes down three big kills in succession. And finally, Reels rotates over. Not going to do anything in his own here. Ooh, be he's, he's getting greedy here, trying to initiate as best he can, but there's nothing left to do. I loved the positioning by Lobster there. That was almost perfect. He scattered away from Sun Kong, split it enough where that if Poseidon wanted to do that reflex Poseidon ultimate, he wasn't going to get both of them. He would have to commit entirely to Isis. Lobster's position there was so flawless that he prevented Captain Twig from doing anything with that initiation. Apollo dunking from above is one of the reasons why we love Apollo so much as a hunter. He can come down from above and do as much damage as possible while also following up there. Reels did come over try to do something with it, but honestly, it was a little bit risky for him to do so. But right off the bat, 5-1, to one, TSM is 2,300 gold in the lead. SK is falling behind here little by little. The next big engagement for TSM will result in a gold fury, and that's what they're looking for. Yeah, and that's the one benefit you see out of Apollo time and time again, using the Across the Sky to be able to stay in lane for the longest amount of time and then influence fights that break out. He helped to secure some extra kills in that middle lane, put the pressure on and help his team get this lead. And that's one advantage he's got over Reels in this lane. He, Reels has to rotate over himself on foot to get there, and it takes a lot longer. He tricks that kind of holds down the mid lane there. Some damage coming out. Spirit Ball, a little bit aggressive. Coming out from Lobster, not going to do anything. Hopping over to the the world's most boring lane, <laughs> Game Hunter say, versus yeah. Maniac here. Uh, I mean, honestly, Kronos doesn't have a whole lot of kill potential early on. Aphrodite doesn't have a whole lot of kill potential early on. They're also quite safe. Aphrodite has her ultimate and the heal, and Kronos, of course, has the rewind and the stun. So, I mean, they're both pretty well, well matched in utility, uh, defense, and of course, a decent amount of push from both of them. Aphrodite's at the point now where she can clear an entire wave with her 3-1 combination. Kronos is at a point now where he can clear the entire wave with his 3-1 uh, combination, plus some base attacks on the back end, and so there's not really any kill potential here, and that's why we really haven't talked a whole lot about this solo lane, but the second one of these towers goes down, we're going to see a big rotation. Aphrodite joining in the mix is going to be huge. Kronos joining in on the mix is going to be huge, but Kronos is more playing for that lake, and he wants to farm as much as he possibly can, so he hits that critical mass that Kronos likes to hit. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what the aim is. I'm really surprised we've not seen the jungle pressure come there, because I feel like whoever gets the first kill on that lane will have a big advantage and be able to start snowballing that lane a little bit in favor of their team. So, surprised to see Chak and Tin not really focused on it after the initial start where you obviously you rotate over. Main, most of the focus has been on this mid lane situation now, especially with these mid harpies. So, we're just going to see how this one continues to play out, but at the moment, Trix Tank looking to go aggressive again, tries to steal away the mana camp. Not today, though, says Badger, making sure they secure that for the team. Chuck's in the area as well. Trick Tank could be out of position here. Obviously, he's got the cloud available and his team's rotating in because here comes the Across the Sky and the Lawbringer as well. Across the Sky onto NG. Meanwhile, at the other side, Cuba Fred doing work onto Artemis at the same time. Chuck's doing a lot of work, but the Kraken comes out as well. Cuba Fred does pick up reels in that fight. Smack's going to run for his life right now after the Across the Sky. The Spirit Ball misses and now Captain Trick's going to rotate out. Most members of TSM getting low, but they did come out ahead in that fight, picking up yet another kill. Bulk up here looking for Gab Nock. It's going to be there. He's going to use the rollout. Roll up on the ground. There goes the Fearless. Go He's interrupted completely by Purification Beats. And now the follow up here. The Ice Soldier is going to do a ton of damage. Poseidon going down. Looking for Engie here. Not going to have enough damage or follow up. But Kronos is on its way. Aphrodite in the fight. Stun. Birds. Back up is there. Spirit Ball going to land on the back tip for Chalk. He tries to get the kill. Kronos gets the stun. It's going to be enough. He's one yeah. base. There goes the Wing Gust. We'll take him out. Now look for the follow up here. Game Hunter taking tons Game of Hunter damage. Greedy. Ooh, time oh. riff rewind. He's got the rewind. That's why Game Hunter is such a fantastic player. He counts his cards carefully. He knows exactly what he has available and what it will gain him. 
Yeah, so eight to one now in favor of a TSM. Already you can see Maniac quickly rushing over to that Gold Fury because they didn't have wall coverage there. And they were like, oh god, are they doing the Gold Fury already? They extend the lead further. Not this time though. TSM playing it safe. They're just going to take away the mid harpies again, extend their XP lead. So that's going to be five and a half K in favor of them in terms of XP. And gold difference is 3.4 K. You know, one of the biggest things, and you know, talking to players at the launch event, and, you know, what they were really most afraid of, and I think the most common thing that they were afraid of was trick stick. And you see it here this game, he's just in your face all the time. He's always, you know, you're doing a damage buff, he's there. You're doing a blue buff, he's there. You're trying to get a back clear of the minion wave, he's there. You're doing harpies, he's there. He's always in your face and he never goes away. In fact, that's one of the reasons why that fight ended up happening, is Trick Stank was over there just harassing the blue buff. They initiated him, they used a lot of damage output. The boar came out from Artemis, the harassment came out from Gav. They tried to kill Trick Stank, he went up on his ultimate, and all of a sudden you had nothing. There goes a kill, looking for it on Catswick. Damage is what they have. Spirit Ball's oh, gonna nice hit him ball. right dead in center. Big, big pick up there. And now Chalk is gonna try and follow up here. There goes the slow. Rain Dance is on the ground. Blink, Fearless in the wall. Badge in trouble. Rollout's not gonna save him this time. There goes the shield wall. Good Cataclysm. One more hit from the Wing Guys will get it. Lobster gets a kill. There goes a hit from the run. Apollo's up there. Apollo's ducking down, but no team follow up here. He's gonna dash away. No, they want to rotate over for the Gold Fury straight away. This is a better call overall. I know Apollo wasted across the skies. He backs out in time. And it's only Reels here and Chuck to try and defend this one in this situation. A lot of damage coming out from TSM, though. And they're going to secure the first Gold Fury of the game as well. Gold lead extending further now for TSM. I love the fact Game Hunter rotated over there quicker than Maniac as well. Looking for another tower dive in the mid lane. Trick's taking a solo up here. He has an ultimate to kind of disengage if he needs to. A decoy on the ground. Looking for the mid tower. It's going to be more gold for them to add into their coffers. They're already 5,000 gold ahead. Reels is going to head on home here. Can't uh, push this tower by himself with the rotation as a possibility. Gold Fury completed. And Apollo's just going to go back to his cave and get his little uh, gold stash even bigger than it is already. Transcend is completed on both hunters though. Draining Blade done on Real Z looking for those boots, but Smek is a little bit ahead of him in that regard. About 700 gold ahead individually as we do of see course. a little bit of a pause coming out here. So we're not, we'll find out exactly why. So it's about, uh, we'll find out how this goes on. But let's have a quick talk about Trick's Tank again. Like we were talking about that a little bit earlier, Driver. And what he seems to do in the most part is he looks like he gets himself caught on purpose. So the enemy team sits there and goes, why, why is this guy here alone? Like, is is something wrong? Is he lagging to that? Well, just let's just kill him. So as soon as they aggress on him, the rest of the t the rest of TSM realize this is happening and turn around and go, okay, now it's go time. And he kind of forced that fight for SK Gaming to actually go into and allow TSM to bring it out on top, basically. He uses his ability that everyone seems to think he gets himself overextended. But really, he's just like calculating the risk correctly. I mean, that's the biggest thing about Sonokong. He's just very safe. He has birds. You know, has bird form to get away. If they have some kind of CC, he'll use ox form instead, knocking them up and also getting some distance between them. He's got the knock up with Warrior's Will. Uh, you know, he also has a little bit of damage and harassment from uh, Magic Cudgel, one of the best abilities in the game as it stands right now. But he also has his ultimate, and you mentioned it there. I mean, that's the biggest thing about uh, characters like Sinokar, characters like Kronos, they have both in the same team, is that they have this ability to reset what you've done to them in some way. You initiate on Sinokar, you use the boar, you use the cataclysm, you use the burst damage, you try to use the kraken on him, he goes up in the air, heals right back up, and dunks down and Shades on you again. And that's the biggest part about Sinu Kong and why I believe Trick Tank just plays him so well is he understands that he is safe to disengage when he needs to, and so he doesn't try to, you know, worry about his own safety. He likes to start good fights for his team and he does it incredibly well. Look at the graphs right now. We're gonna see 5,300 gold in favor of TSM. You can see a big jump on the graph there right after the gold theory is completed. Gold theory will be uh, not responding anytime soon, so that's gonna be insecured and locked for TSM. 10 to 1 right now, it's looking very good. Right side, look for Maniac, one more hit, will do it. Pops the ultimate, needs to misses, but not oh, gonna wow. be enough. Game Hunter gets the solo kill, and this is what Kronos always wants. Penetration on his boots, penetration on his demonic grip, and penetration through Aphrodite. And in a 1v1 situation, that means that solo lane is going to become a big issue for Aphrodite. If that continues to happen, dying in a 1v1 versus Kronos means that Kronos are going to continue to put pressure on the towers. So someone's going to have to go over there and deal with it. And look at how much work he's doing with that big minion wave built up there. That tower is going to get dropped way below half health before Chuck can even turn up. Follow up here. The tower is going to get pretty low on the right side. Will they be able to try to go for it? Kronos is there. Good recovery by Chalk. Gonna come over and defend this for the time being, but it's quite low. Honestly, if they try to avoid this, they will lose a tower. Game Hunter do some damage to here. Mid lane, we're gonna see Isis pushing up against Captain Twig. Captain Twig about three levels behind Lobster right now. Lalik for Gab and the jungle spear ball is gonna Ooh, land. The first damage here, Baja goes down. Player kill comes out for Smek, getting more and more gold. You never want to feed Apollo. 
Lobster, Lobster's really big though as well in this mid lane. Ice is right now four zero and six. Already has that book of tough finished as well as the shoes of the Magi. Meanwhile, look at his lane opponent, Captain Twig. He's only got the shoes of the Magi, not even completed his second item yet. And you can really see the Lobster's doing so much damage. That that Spirit Ball did half of Gap's HP there. Ice is held down the mid lane right now, looking for the follow up after they disengaged entirely. The solo tower is down, which is actually a bit of a benefit for Aphrodite now. She's free to push this up towards the enemy tower. She's not worried about if she leaves the lane, the tower will steal gold and experience from her. She's always has guaranteed and safe farm on the right side of the map. So this is actually really good for Maniac right now to kind of get back up in the lead, but he's already in the lead for his team. 6,900 gold. Look at the difference right now, Hindu. 7k for Maniac. The highest on TSM is 8k for Isis on a play by Lobster Smex at 7,800. The gold difference is just absolutely insane. Tier looking for a solo kill in the mid lane. You're going to find Poseidon, but they just decide to go their, their separate ways. Yeah, and like you said about the gold situation right now, like Trix Tank is only 200 gold behind the highest member of SK. Here's gold Captain Twig taking some aggression again from Tear. Fearless coming out, didn't do too much. Meanwhile, the real Reels taking a lot of damage from Trix Tank here on the front end of it as well. Lawbringer coming out from Keeper Fred, looking for the aggression to Reels. Forces the ball situation. Chuck's there as well. Pops the ultimate to get it on across the skies. It's coming down onto Reels. Reels is going to be the first to drop for sure. Kraken comes out to secure Lobster. That's a big pickup for them though on SK, Day SK Gaming's front line. And now the aggression coming out again, Cuba Fred having to back out for the time being, but a one-for-one -one trade, a mid laner for an AD carry. I'm not sure who to really call who got the bigger pickup there. Uh, I was really, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty uh, excited to see TSM make the decisions they're making right now. Honestly, that could have been a triple quadra kill for them, but they decided to back off and play it safe. They knew Aphrodite was on the rotation over, Chalk was going to be there as well. And so they decided, you know, we have the advantage. We could get kills here, but we also could lose some kills. It's not going to be worth it here. Right side, Game Hunter versus Maniac. The Wiggles, he's oh, doing his best Shadow Q impression. There goes the time stop, and it hits, but it's not enough damage. Rewind's going to be able to hit there. The Kraken is not available. He can't do any burst damage. Besides, he's going to disengage Gab on the left side. He's in trouble. The stun, the burst oh, damage. One more finger bang comes out from Smack and finger gone there. As he gets picked up by Smack. Damage output. Gab is just a big pickup. Ooh, blink. Mid lane. Mid lane. Big Ooh. comes out. Fearless combo. Twig's not got much more mind, but he's not scared to go aggressive because that minion wave's going to help him out a little bit. But here comes Trick Tank rotating over. Captain Twig already aware of what's going on. Meanwhile, in the right lane, Game Hunter is looking for it onto Rift. Maniac. He's got a juke boot as Ooh. much as possible. Nope. Oh, attacks are good enough, says Game Hunter. He's going to secure that kill. And we've seen now why TSM won the invitation to start in launch tournament here. They're really putting on a show for us. Mid lane is now under pressure here. Uh, Lobster is just kind of farming up as much as he can, get as much gain as he can here. Left side, we've got Smek kind of pushing this up here. You see Reelsy waiting in the wings very patiently. It takes a lot of patience to do this, but here comes the issue. Trick State's going to fall. There's the board. CC is going to be enough. Pop certification piece looking for the damage here. Can they get close enough? The cripples on the ground. Trick State is forced to disengage. Beautiful play by Reels. Yeah, he did a really good job there. He knew the ball was going to hit Trick's tank soon after it hit Apollo, so he put, immediately put the trap down to make sure Trick's tank couldn't dive him. And if he got the initiate of the dive, off more than likely he would have popped the um would have jumped onto his cloud to make sure he could have tanked up for him they would have killed him before badger could have even got there so really nice to play from reels in that situation in a 2v1 problem here's on his way over on the left side here looking for that move speed up gonna find it gap's gonna clear it out the way looking at the gold difference it's made 7,000 gold in favor of tsm 12,000 experience tsm far and away is in control of this game 15 to 2 at 17 minutes sk is now charged with pulling out a defense here they have to be very careful with every decision they make because every mistake is going to be amplified by the difference between these two teams they have to be oh, perfect twig, twig. perfect no, there's another one good avoidance there like that more of a miss from oh keep up right there now looking for chalk the damage might be enough here He's the pop is ultimate for damage reduction. There's a the donkey from tier. One more hit will do it. The shield from Gap's gonna be enough. Shield. There goes the cripple. There goes the kraken. There goes the damage. Now fall from Trixake might be enough to the shot. Trying to get Chalk. Chalk goes down. Now there goes Maniac completely surrounded. Reels from over the wall, getting the slowdown from the volley, but it's not gonna be worth it. There is a fire giant on the board. Wow, the surrender that quick boat surrender. Wow, that is was awesome. all you need, honestly. Can you blame them? 18 to two. Yeah. They weren't really pulling it together. They had the opportunity, and you know this is the hard part about this, right? When you're sitting there against a team that's that far ahead and they have Apollo, the rest of the game, Smek is literally just going to be glued to towers and you are making the decision to defend the Fire Giant or defend your tower and that's just going to keep increasing the gold that they have. SK was just demoralized after that. 0-6 by Badger got caught way too many times. Chalk gets taken out too many times. You know, Artemis played by Reels the best he could, but honestly it just comes down to initiation. Some interesting itemizations there. Uh, you know, I'm curious as to why Badger decided to go for Vampiric Stroud on Geb to start. It made him a lot less tanky and easier to kill uh, and honestly slowed down his gain uh, 
as he went into the landing phase, but I think this goes down to uh, individual play. Of course, Smek played wonderfully this year. Obviously, he's fitting in very well at TSM on his new station as Hunter for the, the team that won the launch event, and this, is, this bodes well for the rest of the tournament. Yeah, as long as time goes on, I think th things are looking good for um, TSM in terms of that. I mean, there's a lot of talk between the fact that they replaced, um, sorry, that um, Smek came into TSM, and they lost straight over, so it's interesting to see that they're finally starting to... I think last week it showed that they may have had a few issues like with communication and learning to speak to each other and include him as such. But going on to this Apollo this week, like last week he only played Anha and Ool. But this week he goes on Apollo, he you know works well with the team and thing looks, things look so good for them now. I mean, only two deaths in the entire team of TSM now. Ah, uh, that's the biggest thing. They're playing well across the board. You're starting out, you're getting the first blood on the support that's getting greedy and putting a word down. Uh, you know, you're controlling the landing phase, you're bringing everything together. So, you know, we're going to see uh, strong plays across the board. Game Hunter in the solo lane is one I want to talk about as well. On screen, you'll see a replay of him actually soloing out Aphrodite. You see Aphrodite coming from the jungle here, walking into the lane. Uh, the stun comes out from Kronos, and this is what happens when Kronos is able to get his first item after boots. He has the penetration on the boots, he has the penetration on the demonic grip, and at this point, he just does too much damage. He didn't expect the jump's going to be too much, and now we're going to you know, have this kind of control where you're winning the long lane, you're winning the mid lane, you're winning the jungle, and then if Aphrodite can't hold it against Kronos in the, in the solo lane, what else do you have? I mean, as Chuck, what do you do in that situation? Every lane's losing. Uh, guys, guys, sh should I just keep jungling? Like, do I, do I go into one of these lanes and try and force a kill, but is that going to be enough? Do I just keep farm farming? It's not. It's very, very difficult. So in that situation, I, I can understand why SK Gaming was surrendered there. I mean, they didn't perform badly. I just think TSM really performed very, very well. They really did. I mean, they, honestly, they earned uh, you know, their win here today. Uh, now going into the semifinals is going to be really huge. Uh, you know, The biggest thing that I think people are paying attention to, if you look at the brackets, uh, C9 is waiting for the results of Blood Tech EU versus Team Coast Blue. Of course, we watched Team Coast Blue take a very stunning victory over Exposed Secrets, the fan favorite going into that matchup. So uh, when that is done, we'll see whoever faces off against C9 in the uh, semifinals. But we're going to be watching I5 up against uh, TSM. Now, in that That's last match, we've shown how good TSM is and how well they're playing today. They came out to win today. You can see that in how they're playing and how they're positioning and how they're picking. But I-5 has just been steamrolling through the brackets. Their third seed out of nowhere from last week nowhere. and definitely earned it. Uh, you know, going into this match, who do you have your eyes on? It, they showed, like, one thing about I-5 in that situation is they showed it wasn't a fluke. Like last week wasn't a one-off situation. They've taken out this week, they've taken out Agilitas already in the last round sure. to get to face TSM as well. So they're really showing that they're not just, you know, one of these one-off teams so to speak where they get, they win one every now and again they're really competing this season and they're going to try and contend I, I still think cloud nine and tsm are probably the top two in eu right now but i5 are on the heels and you've got teams like worth gaming bloody tech exposed secrets and agilitas all on their heels you know oh and sk gaming which we just saw too so it's, it's a really open field right now but i still think tsm and cloud nine overall have the edge so i'm gonna have to say i expect tsm to win this one all right, so we're going to be hopping into a brief break, guys. Coming up, it's going to be semifinal round. TSM up against I-5, or I, 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 as Sturgis uh, always uh, tells uh, us uh, to do. <laughs> That's exactly right. So coming up next, going to be I-5 versus TSM, a very hype matchup. So go ahead and tweet out hashtag SWC on who you want to win this matchup. Is it TSM? Is it I-5? Let us know in chat. What is your fan favorite? Who are you guys voting for as you come into this? Pick a side and stick to it, because both these teams are worthy of your vote. Stick around. We'll be right back. 